Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. So I'm going to talk about uh, the ultrasound biomicroscopy technology, and also I would like to present how does it compare with the anterior segment uh, OCT. Many of us, uh, we do know that uh, looking at the anterior segment, many times it does present some difficulties, and it's not always very easy to visualize with the routine exam methods, and that's where imaging comes into place. My goal this morning is to present, uh, in the time allowed, of course, the utility and the benefit of the ultrasound biomicroscopy compared with the anterior segment OCT in pathology that involves the anterior segment. It's been quite some time um, that ultrasound is uh, available, and it was a French scientist, in fact, Paul Langevin, who together with Konstantin Chilovsky in uh, 1926 developed an ultrasonic NO echo sounding device. At the time it was called the hydrophone and it was the basis for the development of the naval pulse echo sonar. It's quite interesting to look at these very old images and you can see how elaborated those machines were, how big and the patient probably was not very comfortable. <laughs> The technology improved so much over the years, and you can see nowadays that the ultrasound is available. Practically, you do have a very um, small, easy-to-use device linked to a computer which uh, provides the images. Um, the UBM technology, the most uh, useful one, and the one that um, Quantel uh, has, is the linear scanning technology. And the benefit is, in fact, that it visualizes the entire interior chamber with a 16 millimeter linear scanning and in one scan, either if it's 25 or the 50 megahertz, you, has, you have a good view of the anterior segment. Also, comparing with uh, what was used during the last 10 years, right now, uh, the non-contact method is available. And the advantage is significant, both for the patient as well as for the examiner. And you can see on the top left, um, it's been years back when we used the water bath. And the setup was um, um, a little bit um, uh, not very comfortable for the patient, and also sometimes you could have the leakage. On the right top, you can see a baby, and probably they are doing a screening for the ROP, for the retinopathy of prematurity. You can see on the bottom the scleral shell. Some of them are more flexible, some of them are a little bit more rigid and they allow the BSS, the saline, which is the contact media for the transducer, so we can take the images. And you can see that the patient actually not necessarily needs to lie down anymore nowadays. The important and something that um, I'm sure that you are going to be much more familiar with is the clear scan. And the big advantage is that uh, actually the patient is much more comfortable, it's sitting in the chair, and um, it's not the whole water bath and the setup that we used to have before. So with the new technology, um, everything was made so much easier. And you can see on the right bottom um, corner that uh, the BSS is practically held in that bullet shape type of um, uh, tip. And I'm sure that um, uh, Dr. Prager is going to uh, go into many details about this technology. What are the clinical applications of the imaging devices? They are quite extensive, starting with the anterior part of the eye with the corneal pathology, refractive surgery, it's a hot topic nowadays, as well as the phakic IOLs. It's always useful in cases of trauma, both before and after the surgery. Anterior segment tumors is a key area in which ultrasound is used, and without the ultrasound, Practically, you do not have a diagnosis and you cannot really uh, relate to the patient about the prognosis and uh, what is going on. Many times we use it uh, for patients that had cataract surgery and in which uh, there were some uh, difficulty uh, surgical problems and we can assess uh, with the ultrasound and see exactly what's going on. And a very um, extensive field in which ultrasound is used uh, it's glaucoma, and uh, this morning you are going to, to hear also from Dr. Noacker. Uh, I am at the University of Arizona, and I'm fortunate enough to have uh, two systems for the ultrasound biomicroscopy. I do have a Quantel and also a Sonomed. 
Uh, we do have the interior segment of CT that was made by Zeiss, and also I do have the Artemis, which is uh, the top of the line, is the very high frequency ultrasound, which is not yet commercially available. So these are my little toys, and uh, it's very interesting to, to see uh, the different pathology and also to use the advantages that um, each technology is offering. While the ultrasound by microscopy involves uh, a coupling media, the BSS, um, it does require um, a setup in which uh, you can saw that there is a scleral shell, not anymore now with a clear scan, but uh, the presence of the coupling media is necessary in order to take the images. In comparison with the anterior segment of CT, it's a non-contact method and uh, it does provide high resolution of the anterior segment. When you look at the different uh, characteristic between the two, I would like to point uh, that the penetration depth in ultrasound, it's six times more than it is in um, the visante or the anterior segment of CT. This is a key factor uh, that provides the many advantages the, uh, the ultrasound has and that I'm going to um, talk about. Uh, we did talk about the fluid presence in the UBM and then um, you don't need that, so it's just air in the case of the OCT. The scan geometry is also different. So for the UBM, we are using a linear scanning. For the anterior segment optical coherence tomography, it's a rectangular, a telecentric type of scanning. And then for the Artemis, which is a very high frequency ultrasound, it's the so-called arc or concentric, in which, in fact, you do have a laser point, which is the target, and the patient does not need to move the eye, but the transducer is moving on the arc. What about the ultrasound? Maybe it's not the best uh, thing to call them limitations, but um, that does require some skills, and we need to know about them. So the first um, um, requirement, the coupling media, um, it's improving over time, and as I mentioned with uh, the Aviso and with the clear scan, uh, it was improved in terms of comfort uh, for both patient and the examiner. Uh, sometimes there is uh, inadvertent pressure on the eye cup, and this, uh, while you scan, it can influence especially the angle configuration, and then if you look at the cornea, sometimes you realize that it might be too pressure. So when I'm scanning, in fact, I look at the monitor and on the screen on the computer, and if I see a little bit of deformity in the cornea, it tells me that um, I apply a little bit too much pressure. Also, you can use, or in the past, it was just one quadrant that can be each at a time. Um, it's not a very fast m method, but with time, with practice, nowadays um, it doesn't take me more than a few minutes to take the, all the images that I um, need and also to scan 360 degrees each eye. So uh, it does require uh, some skills that uh, with practice uh, comes uh, pretty handy. One thing that uh, we need to be careful about is the possible risk of infection or corneal abrasion. And um, in patients with trauma, you need to uh, have a judgment called um, at what time and in which condition you are going to use. Um, this being said, of course, it's contraindicated in open globe uh, injuries. Nevertheless, in patients with significant trauma, I still use the ultrasound. And the way that I do it is I put uh, the transducer in a finger of a glove in which we put the BSS. So uh, it's going to be very gently application on the eye, and you can see uh, very good images that would help you to see exactly um, what the trauma was before you take the patient to the operating room. What are the advantages? And that these are very important. That makes it a very important technology. First of all, it's the practically the main uh, technology that visualizes the ciliary body. So uh, because of that, it's essential in defining the mechanism of uh, closure in um, angle closure glaucoma. Also, I mentioned uh, the ocular tumors. So when we do have an iris lesion, it's very important to visualize and to see is the ciliary body involved or not. In this way, we can um, give a feedback to the patient uh, regarding the prognosis. The gold standard um, technology is in plateau iris and also in uh, retro iridal processes, where um, nothing can replace the ultrasound in terms of um, imaging uh, what the pathology is. 
So all the anatomic relationship, either that it's in normal patients or in patients that present a different pathology, can be uh, visualized very well with the ultrasound. And the advantage is uh, even if you have a cloudy cornea or uh, opaque uh, media, you can go uh, and see uh, in depth uh, what's happening. In preoperatory assessment of the anterior segment, uh, it does offer us a best uh, surgical planning and it avoids surprises in the operating room. The very high frequency uh, ultrasound, 30 to 7 megahertz, is limited to the anterior segment. And I would like to um, present a few slides about different uh, pathology. As you can see, um, I mentioned glaucoma and trauma and the refractive and uh, corneal pathology. Um, but also in uh, cases of foreign body um, or displaced IOL, it's a very useful tool. These are some images that were taken with the Quantel technology, and you can see on the top left uh, large iris cyst. On the bottom, you can see the iris cyst, but also there is also a little cyst in the ciliary body. On the right top corner, you see an iris tumor. So the iris is uh, distorted and uh, it's thickened. On the bottom, you see that uh, there is a ciliary body tumor. The ciliary body is much increased and pushing a little bit uh, forward the iris. So just getting on a few indication of the ultrasound, I'm going to present a few uh, perioperative assessment uh, in which I use the ultrasound. This is a patient that came with Peter's anomaly, and um, he had a significant cataract. He was referred for surgery. And I used both techniques, the ultrasound and also the anterior segment OCT, in order to visualize before uh, I took him over to the operating room. And as you can see on the Top over here, uh, all these are ultrasound images comparing with the anterior segment OCT. You can see the cornea, the iris, and look at the depth of the image and how much details it's uh, giving comparing with the anterior segment OCT. Here I do um, recognize that the cornea looks much better and it's high resolution, but you cannot see anything what's happened behind that. I would like to point out over here how uh, almost closed the angle is, so it's a very, very narrow, and the iris is pushed forward. So we went ahead, and uh, he had the cataract surgery performed. Uh, there was um, uh, peripheral anterior synechia with uh, some uh, thinning of the cornea over here that uh, was still present. But comparing the before surgery with the image after surgery, you can see the deepening of the anterior chamber and then the opening of the angle. This is a patient that had a long history of Sjogren disease and uh, he, she could hardly open her eyes. Uh, with the anterior segment OCT, in fact, we were able to uh, see how uh, uh, thin the cornea is. And in fact, it was down to 210 uh, microns. So we could um, take her to the operating room before perforation. In patients that uh, have keratoconus and they do have index plays, the intrastromal uh, corneal rings, um, we can use the technology in order to see exactly how deep the um, uh, segments were placed. So this is the ultrasound image and also the uh, Visante image, and we can see the uh, site of the index. In cases that um, did not go very well uh, during surgery with a cataract surgery or maybe something happened like a trauma later on, um, there is um, inflammation sometimes because the haptics are rubbing against the ciliary body. You can see very well over here that this lens, uh, posterior chamber intraocular lens was displaced and also it's tilted. So these quantile images are um, showing exactly what happens. It's very important to see the positioning of the lens in order to decide uh, what you are going to do um, in the surgical uh, room. The technology is very, very useful for patients that are doing ICLs. And in fact, uh, without having the ultrasound, it's hard to take the patient to the operating room. Why do I say that? It's because there are certain criteria which are pretty rigid if the patient is a good candidate for the ICL or not. 
And um, ultrasound is practically the only technology that can allow visualization um, angle to angle so you can measure and see if the patient would be suitable for this uh, technology. Also, in patients that um, do have the ICL, uh, once in a while I do get some referrals in order to um, visualize them and to see what's happening. Patients with glaucoma that, um, like this one, that had also a corneal transplant and had a tube placed, uh, in fact, uh, he had um, a molteno valve, you can easily visualize uh, the position of the uh, tube and also if there is endothelial touch or not. This patient was pretty interesting. It was uh, sent over before uh, the surgery, and it was more an uh, unusual case in which there were large cysts, and you can say there are multiple ones, in the anterior chamber. So I'm uh, waiting, in fact, for pathology uh, after the surgery was uh, done elsewhere. But you can see exactly um, the dimensions of the cyst, and also um, you can delineate very well, so uh, you don't uh, have some surprises in the operating room. This was a 50 years old patient that had uh, trauma, so he went, underwent the PKP, and you can see that it was a very um, uh, big laceration, full thickness. After he had the corneal transplant, he developed a delen. So you can see actually how thin the cornea was in this particular site, so we decided uh, to uh, uh, re-graft him. We always get trauma in the hospital, uh, and uh, most of the injuries are secondary to blunt objects. The ultrasound is essential uh, because there is necessary to do a very meticulous evaluation and to select the appropriate treatment in patients with trauma because otherwise the patient uh, have significant visual impairment and they can lose their eye. The traditional methods of evaluation uh, were imaging, but uh, the ultrasound brought uh, new features that overcome the limitations of the previous methods like X-ray or CT. So in trauma cases, we can use either the uh, 10 megahertz or for the interior segment, we can use the higher frequency, the 35 megahertz. This is a patient that um, uh, had a trauma and in fact, uh, she had uh, high pressure and we can easily visualize the blood clot in the uh, angle over here that induced the uh, high spike. Another patient with a significant trauma that induced uh, a cataract, a dense cataract. There was no visualization of the posterior pole. And we can use uh, both te technology. Look at the difference between the visante here on the left and the ultrasound. You can see the cornea very well and just the tip of the iceberg, I would call it, over here. There is nothing behind and nothing deeper than that that you can see or tell about. In comparison, the ultrasound allowed us to visualize everything that was going on, and despite the um, cornea and the angle, we can see how deep the uh, pathologic trauma was um, induced in this particular patient. Also, the same um, very significant comparison between the Byzante and the UBM. Look how much of the pathology it's missing on the anterior segment uh, ultrasound. And again, the ability of the uh, ultrasound to penetrate deeper, again, it's six times more, it's that, um, it's that uh, it can show what uh, the angle um, is obstructed. Another patient with thinning of the sclera. And um, I wanted to present in some inflammatory type of cases, we can actually visualize in patients with scleritis, the thickening of the pathology, and the ultrasound can tell us in uh, millimeters how much it is, and then um, see the re uh, response to the treatment. A patient with uh, ciliary body detachment, and also pars plana exudates. In a patient with chronic uveitis, we can see the uh, reason for the low pressure, and it was the ciliary body detachment. I'm going to wrap up over here um, in order to have uh, some time for my colleagues. Thank you.